Joy. Hello, sir. How are you, sir? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I want to ask you a question I've asked a lot of people in sport. Mm -hmm. And I think when I tell people who are not in sport, what some of them say, they get very, very surprised. So I'm going to ask you straight out, do you actually like football? Love it. I hate the industry. Love football. Right, so that's what I mean. A lot of people mm -hmm. love the game, love playing. Mm -hmm. What do you mean when you say you hate the industry? Um, I think that comes from my late introduction into the game and probably being the last of the quote-unquote old school. Um, just how much has changed now where it's more money-driven more than the actual love for the game and everything is, it's like, I wouldn't say it's media trained, but every time a team loses, it's like, ah, oh, we played really great today, fans were great, we go again next week. <laughs> you know, like, you see the same tweet or the same Instagram post week after week and sometimes it's just like, you know, you know people don't feel like that, so why, don't, why are you so scared to just give your honest opinion and just say, no, we were crap, the better team won. Yeah. Know, sometimes um, you can do that. So why, why is that sort of level of bullshit taken over in, in football? Because it's become business more than it's become football. And do you think playing at Watford mm -hmm. gives you a better chance of staying in the football that you like than if you went to a you know, massive mm, club like that? No, I disagree, because I don't think any, any team in the Premier League now is a, a small club. If you look no. at Burnley, for example, yeah. um, the way that's changed the culture of that on the Daishi in the ca case of what, three, four years? European football, like, taking on all the big boys and you wouldn't class them. As, people still class them as a small club, but in terms of revenue and everything, it's still a big club. It's just the way he runs it. Right, but, so, so that, but, but he's been able to do that because it's Burnley and you do mm. what you do because you're Watford. I, do, you I think, do you think a Chelsea or a Man City or a Liverpool player mm -hmm. think differently about football to how you think? Mm, depends on the individual, but I think if you are, if you are Eden Hazard, you think he goes into Chelsea and goes, I'm going to do exactly what Chelsea say or does what he wants to do. I don't know. I don't know the guy, but I would assume that somebody of his, the way he plays and the way he carries himself, he, he's very conscious in doing what he wants to do and making himself happy. So if he wanted to post something that was not Chelsea orientated, I feel like he would do that if he wanted to. Right. Can, do should, you feel you can do that at Watford? Yeah. There's going to be people, people that complain, but that's life. I'm going to probably be people that complain I'm wearing jogging bottoms and not in a suit like you. So it's just, <laughs> it's just, no matter what you do in life, there's always going to be somebody that's going to complain about something that you did. So yeah. I was saying it to somebody the other day, you can, you can give to charity. Let's just make up a number. Let's say you give 5,000 to charity. There'll be half people going, oh, that's a really good thing. The other people are going, well, he earns X amount. Why did he give 50,000? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do no you, matter do you, what. Do you care what people think about you? No, because... Nobody? The lady that's sitting over there. That's it? That's it. The rest, the rest all know me. And I'm, I've done this thing over the years, which I'm trying to come away from now, which I, I put up a, a barrier. So I should point out, by the way, the lady sitting over there is his partner, not Yeah, she's not, not a random not woman. Not a random woman who yeah. just <laughs> wandered in. Yeah. yeah, just get that. But, um, yes. yeah, because all of it boils down to this. I'm Troy Deeney on a football pitch, and everyone thinks that's me. Like, I'm supposed to be this tough guy, all these different things, but I'm the softest man going. Genuinely, it's real softy, mommy's boy. Soft? Mm-hmm. OK, define soft. Mommy's boy. Don't really like doing too much. I enjoy my own company. And up here, there's a lot going on that's messing me up from a young age. So trying to control that and, and battle with this daily is what um, shows, I'm, shows I'm vulnerable. And I, I don't think a lot of people are willing to stand and say, yeah, I'm vulnerable because I, I can't control this all the time. Right. But so a lot of people who don't know you mm -hmm. just see you from the outside. They mm -hmm. see you on the pitch, mm -hmm. hard. Aggressive, yeah. Yeah, really kind of looking after yourself, mm -hmm. taking no prisoners. They know about you going to jail mm -hmm. because you got, you know, caught yeah. up in bad stuff. Mm -hmm. So how do you say to those people? Or do you, first of all, do you understand why they might think you're not soft? Yeah. And, but, and secondly, how do you explain that that same person who says you're a mommy's boy and you're mm -hmm. soft and you're vulnerable gets involved in a in a brawl mm -hmm. in the street and you kind of, you know, yeah, do things that's, that most people that's do? That's very easy. It's very easy to answer for me because that's, it's a lifestyle. So I didn't ask to be born and raised where I was born and raised. Circumstances will define who you are. Growing up as a kid, I was exposed to a lot of things, which then made me have to harden myself. Like? Like 
dad beating up me and my mum for the age of 10, 11. Social services, being the man of the house from 12. These things then I can't be the soft. Because your dad was in jail? Yeah. My dad was in and out of jail for his whole life. Like, I'm not trying to glorify it, but that's just the life that we knew. But to me, he was still Superman. Because I didn't know as much as I know now until he, he passed away, which was six years ago. So up at that point, I was still, my mum was like an angel. She shouted me completely away from any of that. And we was, was quite naive because we wasn't exposed to it. But the minute I was exposed to it, it was like, oh, this is, this is what the real world is. And I had to grow up. And like I say, the, the core of who I am and what I'm about, I'm a, I'm a loyal person, I'm honourable. I say I'm soft, I'll do anything for anyone. But there's this other part of me that I've been exposed to so much at a young age that it's now right. I have to look after myself. So what's the stuff going, going on inside your head that you have to worry about? You've caught me on a good day, actually. So today I'm actually supposed to be the happiest I've ever been. I'm proper excited about doing this. It's massive for me. Meeting yourself, I'm not just saying it because you're here. Everyone, everything in my life is going really smooth. Yeah, I woke up this morning and I'm depressed, I'm sad. I just want to cry. That's the balance that's going through. Because little things, I can't speak to my dad because I want to. I can't get advice off my dad when... Because he's dead. He's dead, yeah, he's dead. But like, you know, you want to pick up the phone and go, ah, oh, I feel like crap today, dad. Like, what are you doing? And did you have that relationship with him when he was alive? No, and that's what I mean. So it's a lot of it is down to why am I... I punish myself for being, doing well. So I'm doing well now, so why do I deserve it? Because I've done a lot of stupid stuff in the past. I've hurt people, continue to make mistakes along the way, which we all do. But little things, my dad never went on holiday. I'm fortunate enough to go on four holidays this year. But you also say your dad used to beat you up. Mm -hmm. beat only once, up. only once, but that was once too many for some right. people. But to me, it's just, it's just circumstance. He's not is, a nasty is, person. Is, are, you picking, are you wanting to pick up the phone to talk to him because you didn't have a relationship you'd like to have had? No, that's what I'm saying. It's really weird because, again, probably this is what comes into my personality. My dad was two different people. He was a known person in the street and what he was doing that way. And at home, he was daddy, completely different. But every now and again, that stuff spilled into home life. Do you think if you hadn't been a successful footballer, mm -hmm making a good living, mm -hmm. do you think you might have ended up living the same sort of life as he did? No, because it's not, it's not for me. He drilled that in, I'm, I'm too soft for that. Don't get me wrong, the environment and where I am, or where I grew up, sorry, would, would lead you down that path, but I wanted to be a fireman. That was my favourite. Fireman? Yeah, because I know somebody that's in my family that was like four days on, four days off, and I used to be a real sleeper, so like, ah, oh, four days of sleep, that's... It's unbelievable, I'll do whatever to get that. Now you have mornings on, rest of the day Yeah, off. so now, now, yeah, now I do three hours work and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and get paid well for it. But um, no, that was it. I just, I think what it all boils down to, and a, a lot of people that were, were from lower income housing and, and working class backgrounds will understand that it's, there's not many options. You don't see, take that back, there is options, you don't see many options. Mm. You don't see many people from your community going, Right, where he's a doctor, he's a lawyer, he's, you just see the drug dealers, the footballers, and the people that work in the factory. That's my, my area. If I went back to my area right now, I could ask 20 people. Some would work for Land Rover, some would be doing what they're doing on the road, and then other people would be like, oh, but Troy plays football. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And, but, but, it, but so what is, what is being, uh, would, you, would you play football every weekend if it wasn't your job? Yeah, I always played football. Like, you play football for nothing? Yeah, just, just for if it was my still, release. If it was still an amateur sport... Yeah, it's, still, it's my release. It's just my it. release. I, that's the only time I'm carefree is when I'm on a football pitch. And do you care about how much you earn? Beyond... Uh, no, I did. At, at one point I did. It was, again, because at that point I was changing people's lives. Not only myself, my family and, and the circumstances back home. You can put my mum in a different area. You can put my nan in a different area. My brother lives in the same area, but that's by choice. But like, you know, it's just one of those things where like, you can buy properties and you can just show people, look, there's a different, different side to things. And for people that haven't been in it, it's really strange. Like they go, no, but why don't you go on four or five holidays a year? Why don't you go on two holidays? No, like we, we didn't. I think the first holiday we went on was like 15, 16. And that was... And, and it seemed like when you were with the other players, mm -hmm. um, how has the money, do you think, changed 
the game. Footballers as a breed? Honestly, I think, again, looking at the statistics, a lot of footballers are from low income housing. So you naturally become, I found this the biggest problem with me is I went from being Troy the, the son to Troy the, the breadwinner. So you kind of do this thing where you overlap your parents without meaning to, because you're providing for them as well. So they kind of give you a, they might let you get away with things that you probably wouldn't have done as a kid. And what about friends and hangers on and all that? Oh, yeah, I had all that. But thankfully for me, Jay will help sorted that out because um, I've said it. I've said it. I've <laughs> That's read, a bit I've, drastic. No, I know. I wouldn't wish. I don't want anyone to go that route. There's, there's definitely other ways to do it. But I, I used to go out with like 40, 50 people, easy on a weekend. There'd be loads of us, and two of us would cover the bill. All have a good time. Everyone go out, finish. But then afterwards, like well, as soon as I got locked up, I had like six people send me letters and send me money. You worked out who your friends were. Yeah, real quick. And it's just like, oh. This is all sort of bullshit. But yeah. thankfully, I did that when I wasn't earning massive amounts of money, yeah. and it was more of a okay reality check. Let's let's line yeah. up and do what we need to what do. Was, what was it like being in jail? It, it's it's weird. Um, it's like going back to school, being told what to do, where to go, that kind of thing. I didn't like that because I do like my own freedom. But there's um, it humbled me massively to the point where I had to get in touch with this because this is the biggest tool that no one really looks after. And um, again, I was so wrapped up in my own little bubble and me and my friends, and we were, we were untouchable in my mind. Like we could do what we wanted, say what we wanted and no one could ever say anything. And um, that soon showed me really quick that it can all be taken away very fast. Is it, were you scared at all? No, I wasn't scared. It was probably the, an easier job because I didn't have to look after anybody else, I just had to look after me. Right. So it's, it's one of them ones where I don't have to worry about my son, I don't have to worry about my ex-partner, I don't have to worry about my mum, I don't have to worry about my nan because they're, they were right. And my brother looked after them outside, whereas inside it was just me and a few people that I knew in there. Did you feel when you were in there that you'd never be in there again? Yeah, I've said that. Since if I ever end up back in there, then I've been the biggest fool going. But like. It strips away from your, your humanity. Like anyone who says they enjoy jail is, is an idiot. Like it's it's not fun. It's yeah. really not fun. And anyone who does say it's fun and they enjoy it should probably stay there. And how many how many of your sort of close friends now mm -hmm. are from that part of your life, and how many are from football? Um, Do you think football is two, two, two from then? Yeah, two that stayed stayed around. And how many how many? I'm I'm always surprised with footballers I know when they've moved on. Mm -hmm. Is how no, you don't seem to keep that many close friends from teams you've been in. you can't. In. Oh, football-wise? Yeah. Oh, it's impossible. It's just an, an industry that you're probably going to play against that person, so you can be friendly, but it's you've got your stuff, I've got my stuff, and everyone thinks they're important and more important than everybody else, so why so are you going to waste so, time? Is it, so when you say, like, within every club, is there, like, mm -hmm. a hierarchy? And everybody knows who the main guy is and who the... Yeah, I'd probably say that, yeah. It's probably, yeah, probably fair to say. Although and, and there's a team environment, there's always a, he's the best player, he's the captain, he earns the most, or, you know, there's always... And a do you all know what each other earn? Pretty much. Yeah, you can, you can hazard a guess at it, but no one, <laughs> no one ever comes in with a patient and goes, do you want to have a look at that? So they want to look at the tax and be like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's like that, that kind of... Do you, do you like that team environment? Are you a team um, guy? Yeah, on the pitch I am. But I don't do the whole group WhatsApp and... You I'm, don't? No, nah, I took myself out of that. I don't... I like to do my work, enjoy it, and then as soon as I leave, I'm Troy again, then I'll just do my own thing. And Who's your closest mate at Watford? Uh, Adrian Mariepa. That'd be my best friend at uh, Watford. Just and what's, 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 the, what's the vibe there? He, he helped me out when I was in jail. So he sent my ex-partner like ten thousand pounds to to like cover bills and stuff because I weren't getting paid. So wow. again, at that point, he'd only knew me seven months, eight months. But again, just an understanding and uh, just a respect for each other. And yeah, he's just a great guy to be fair. So there's a, a deeper level than the football friend, as everyone yeah. likes to say. And what about uh, coming up to the cup final? Mm -hmm. do, do, does the FA Cup matter? Like it doesn't seem to me to matter as much as it used to. Do you feel that mm -hmm. as a player? It, de it depends. 
who you're asking. I guess if yeah. you're in the final, it does. No, it, it's weird for Watford because, again, it's not been in my lifetime. It's, I think it's 35 years, 36 years since the uh, last time they were there, mm. and they lost in that. So you've got a whole new generation of kids that don't actually know anything other than championship football and, and the, yeah. the recent years in the Prem. So it, it's a whole new wave. But for me... But they've seen you at Wembley. Yeah, we've, other than the Wolves game, we've lost every time. So it's a right. bit of a... It's, it's not, <laughs> we don't really want to go back. But um, no, I think, it's, I think it's huge. I think it's a huge occasion. And for me, I always think of the FA Cup and I think of the Ryan Giggs goal against Arsenal. That's synonymous. And you just, I remember being a kid watching that on, on the TV. And that was going, semi, wasn't it? Yeah, at yeah. Miller Park. Yeah. So it was like, it's one of them ones where you go, oh, that's, the, that's unreal. Again, because of the, the way he scored. And, and his chest hair. Uh, very good chest hair, yeah, yeah. I can't go Amazing that Amazing chest hair. Yeah, but um, <laughs> he scores that goal no and tattoos. you go, wow. No chest tattoos either. Yeah, it's kind of been replaced now, hasn't it? it certainly has. Yeah. How many of your players don't have tattoos? Two? I said to Sean Dyche, if I was a manager, I wouldn't have any players with tattoos. You wouldn't have any players. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> <laughs> it's again, it's a generation thing, though, isn't it? It's, uh, it's You've got a lot of tattoos, though. I've got a few, yeah. I've only got one good one. Which the rest is? It's on my back. What is it? It's a soldier. And basically just trying to represent me. Been through a lot of war and struggles. And now he's just trying to get home to the peaceful land. Okay. So it's like a colour theme of that. Right, so you keep coming back to this, this stuff in your head. Just mm-hmm. d- d- unbundle it for me. What's going on? Um, what's going on? Probably better off asking now. What's going on in my head, bruv? <laughs> 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 no, there's all sorts. It's just, honestly, it's just accepting that A, you don't know everything, and B, being vulnerable enough to. Because it's weird in, in like a comedy sense, I can laugh at myself and I can hammer myself more than any critic ever can. But I'm very vulnerable when it comes to relationships or when it comes to letting people into certain things because I've always been the man from a young age. So it's very, yeah, there's different things that will trigger me off. And then now, because I'm very aware of it, I'm trying to assess it, but then I over-assess it and then mm. I start playing on my own mind again. Right. So when you woke up, because I get a lot of depression, when yeah. you woke up this morning, what, what did that feel like? Honestly, it's, that means it just feel like shit. Do you know, you know if you've had like, you know, if you used to eat him really well, then you have like two McDonald's in the row, and you're just like, ugh. You feel like, that's how I feel. I don't, I don't ever feel like I suffer with depression because I've never got to a point where I feel like I needed tablets or any extra help. But there's definitely times when I'm, I, I dip, and I dip massively to the point where I'm like, really arguing with myself, like, why are you like this? There's nothing, there's nothing wrong, like, and I try again, go back to, look where you came from to where you are now. So what, I had no stresses then, or I didn't think I had any stresses then. And now I'm in a much better position where life's easy and everyone's happy, yet I'm still beating myself up about things that I can't change. Yeah, but also you say everybody's happy, your family broke, your marriage yeah. broke up. Yeah. So that's, that's my choice for yeah. Sure, but that's, yeah. that that's causes unhappiness and difficulty. Mm. Yeah, it causes difficult, yeah, it causes difficulty. Um, in terms of happiness, I think that would be that would be me evaluating and saying, right, I can't do this anymore because not only am I hurting myself, I'm hurting the others involved. So then you, you break away from that and you get to a point when you're like, what do I do? I genuinely didn't know what I was going to do. I just went to work. And that was it. And I got my head into work. And my lovely partner that sat over there, we just literally started talking and she went through a similar thing. So naturally along the way, we both was like, no, we're not going to do anything. We don't want to be a couple. We both want to enjoy time. And before you know it, you just end up... I never thought there was a thing called soulmates until I met her. And what about with, you, with, your, with your son? How's your, how's your own relationship with him? Uh, a lot better, yeah, a lot better. It's, it's, it's actually got better since I've come away because I'm not... Right so frustrated all the time yeah. and I'm not chasing uh, other people to be better because I've got this thing where I hate seeing people just plateau yeah. I hate if there's so much more to give and you're just like no no I'm happy here because it's safe and it's easy like you've got to be scared to be better yeah. you've got to be scared to go to work or you know what this might not work out or me exposing myself in this, in this interview might not work out well but it makes me so you happy think, so are you driven by I wrote a book about winning yeah. And I asked everybody whether they were mo- more motivated by loving winning or fear of losing. 
Are you driven by fear? No, I'm driven by proving other people right, wrong. My own inner side of, like, if you look at any people from, when I was in the championship, it was, oh, yeah, he's good, but he's not Premier League good. Yeah. Then you get into the Premier it's like, oh, he's good, but he's not. He's Watford. Yeah, he's Watford. Yeah. And then, obviously, I, along the way, I've had, like, Arsenal, Tottenham, people have all come in and tried to take me. Then it's like, ah, no, we don't need him. But then you play against these other teams and then you can just be walking down the road and an Arsenal fan, again, the club that probably dislikes me the most, fans <laughs> will be like, oh, we could do with somebody like you. Yeah. That then makes me go, no, I'm doing the right thing. And my biggest fear is, what am I going to do after football? Where's that high going to come from? That's my, what I'm trying to work out at the moment. So you do get a high? Yeah, football is my high. I go, when I walk out on the pitch. Right, and it, but was it tr what about training? Yeah, I love training. You like I enjoy it? it, yeah. I genuinely enjoy keeping fit. That is like a, a thing of mine. And you love playing. Mm hmm And you know it's not going to last forever. No. Got about eight years left in me. Have you? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm only 30, relax. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> no, your level, yeah. it's hard. Yeah, obviously you want to stay at the highest level as long as you can, like in any, any sport, and then you just filter down. And if my passion for it goes, which I can't see that happening, then I'll, I'll move away. It won't ever be for money. I won't be doing it for money. And what do you think? What do you, so when you see like these, I always think about when I look at Gary Neville and Jamie mm -hmm. Carragher and Gary Lineker doing what they do, mm -hmm. and they do it very, very well. Yeah. But I always think it can't ever, ever replace what they've done. No, but I think, again, they must be in a place where it's, they've, okay, that's my old life, put that away. And obviously, if you're talking about Gary Neville, he tried to do the coaching yeah. as well as that. And I think he found along the way, no, this is probably more my my fit in terms of the media. What do you think your fit might be? Um, honestly, I think I got a higher calling. I think there's more outside of football that I can do in terms of helping youth, helping people just express themselves, mental health or even stuff now in terms of like knife crime and stuff. Because again, I've been through all of that lifestyle. So who do people relate to more? With great respect to a politician that's probably never been through it or someone like me that's been through it and gone, right, I, I left those distractions behind, but if I put my mind to it, this is what I achieved. So when you talk about high, most people when they talk about high calling, they mean, they mean God? Yeah, I don't, I don't. You're not yeah. God? You're not talking about... No, you're not I don't, talking I don't about, a God. I just feel like there's more to, again, coming from where I came from, there's, there's a box, you've been put in that box, this is, this is here. If you get out of it, you probably get out of it to about here. But if you look at where I'm at, I'm probably here already. But now I've got to here, you guys are talking to me, for example. Yeah. That, that then shows, wait, there's more, because look at the target audience I'm now going to reach. Don't know what comes back off this, if it's good or bad. Well, if it's good, let's keep going that way. Right. Let's keep pushing the boundaries and just, keep, again, showing as many people as you can that there's, there's more to life than just being, trying to be cool. I hate that people try and be cool. Right. Do you feel at times that in the industry mm. that you're surrounded by people who actually that is what they do get, care about? Looking cool, yeah. Instagram school. likes, all that sort it's of school, stuff. It's cool, isn't it? You get the cool kids, you get the kids that want to do their work, and then you right. get the want to be bad boys. Right. But, but let's be honest, we're in the softest sport in, in the country. Like, you can't touch anyone now without getting sent off. Not that I'm talking about Arsenal or anything, but um, yeah, you literally, <laughs> you literally touch somebody now, and it's like, if you look at the Patrick Bamford incident recently. Oh, that was, but that was just cheating. Exactly, but yeah. then that's now what people think is acceptable. Nobody, nobody's actually gone, oh my God, I can't believe he's done that. It's like, well, he's just, he just looks like a fool. Oh, I think quite a lot of people Can you imagine if that happened 10 years ago? Yeah, I think it, it's different. Yeah, sure. so that's what I mean. Sure. We're just getting into that point now where it's all, what, what is cheating? Yeah. Everyone, cause if to you be get fair, Sean together, calls it out all the time. All is, yeah, but he's not, he's not praised for that. <laughs> he's, no. now, he's now getting to the point where people think he's just talking the same yeah, yeah, yeah. nonsense, but he's actually making a good point. But yeah. you, again, it comes back to the whole thing of how many people within this industry or in life now are very comfortable to tell the truth. Yeah. Because you don't want to offend someone, you don't want to have a backlash or you're not strong enough to say, this is my opinion and I stand by it. And when you talk about, so tell me more about this higher calling. Mm -hmm. Can you see yourself going into, you talk about the issues, mm -hmm. knife crime, youth work, mental health, mm -hmm. but. Uh, ultimately, I mean, could you ever see yourself going into politics, for example? No, it looks stressful. It looks stressful. I've watched it on BBC Two sometimes. And it's, it's hard work. It's on BBC One as well, you yeah. know. I mean, oh, that's <laughs> number two. I used to go to my nans, that's what it was. But um, 
No, I think there's definitely there's there's people you can uh, attach yourself to and kind of more of a mediator, I suppose, in that yeah. way, and, and try and be the link between the two. Because, like I say, if again, I don't really know your background, so I apologise if I'm wrong, but if you go to speak to somebody, let's say, that's from, from Peckham, a young yeah. kid from Peckham, you probably won't understand, you and you probably won't understand him, but if you have me as a mediator, yeah. where you say, this is what I want to do, this is what I see has changed, right, and I can articulate it to you a bit better than he may, may okay. be able to, or vice versa. Well, listen, we're going to go to Peckham, <laughs> and I'm going to say to you, tell, me, other place tell you that Peckham. kid to help me stop Brexit. Oh, oh God, okay. yeah, you're going to need more than that, yeah. <laughs> but... Um, even that, again, from someone that doesn't really know too much about politics, it's, that's just the biggest mess in, in UK history, surely. For sure. Yeah, and it's yeah. just like, how can a kid from Birmingham that doesn't know anything about anything when it comes to politics be sitting there going, how have we... I, I don't even know when the next date is now, because it was got to be done in May, it's got to be done in April. It's like, if that was any other business, it'd literally be thrown out, like, nah, next, next idea, let's go. Yeah. What's your do, take on it? Do you, uh, I'll t- you'd be here all day. <laughs> uh, do you um, do you see do you see, do you think do you see yourself as political though? Do you have a political view of the world? I have a simple view of the world, which I don't think fits in politics. I right. think that again, for the outside looking, I might be massively wrong. But you look at the House of Parliament; everyone has voted Leave, but it feels like the House of Parliament was all stay. Hold on a minute, fifty-two percent. Still it's leave, not everyone. Though. Still leave, though. It's not everyone. Still leave, though. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong. It does. It's, that's, that is what was voted for. Yeah. And then we're not, we still haven't given that message out. We haven't done what the people have asked for. Yeah. yeah. So what are we? Are we, are we literally going with the vote or are we just saying, no, nah, no, nah, we're not going to do it? Or, we, or the discovering it's, it's too hard to do without damaging the country. But then... That's a mistake we, again, you have to live by your mistakes. So we've all, 52%, as you say, have voted to leave. Yeah. Let's do it. And let's leave and let's make the mistakes and go, ah, that weren't right. We need to do some else. Because nobody actually knows what Brexit's like without. Right, Troy, you're not, you're not going into politics. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, I, I, again, I'm a simple, simple man. Like, that's what we agreed to do. We still haven't done it. So we've either just got to scrap it and, again, vote again. Mm-hmm. see what people is because I again for Birmingham we don't have the same input as what you get in London I feel like London's its own little mm. its own little country within, within this but country. Birmingham was like 50-50 I think yeah but mm. we how it was presented up there was very much more about um, immigration yeah. more than it was actually about what happens to businesses and, and, yeah. and, and the actual currency yeah on, just on the on the back to football mm-hmm. the are you you mentioned the thing about you know oh he's Watford his championship, mm-hmm. whatever. Are you surprised, just being objective and analysing yourself, mm-hmm. are you surprised you've never played for England? Yeah. Not in the past couple of years, but definitely the first year in the Prem, which was 15 goals in all competitions, 10 assists, and you'd think that would get you at least a friendly. And do you, uh, uh, why do you think you didn't? Is it, is, it, is it an image thing? 100% it is an image thing. Why do you think I got sent off against Arsenal? It's an image thing. Right. I see, you see 40 times a game that same tackle, yeah. pushing past somebody to go to the next one. But yeah. because the guy was five foot six and I'm six foot, it's an elbow <laughs> in the face. But because it's Troy, it's that if you looked at um, what was the game on the weekend, Matic uh, against Man City, uh, against Chelsea, sorry. Yeah. The elbow to Aspilicueta is a blatant elbow compared to mine. Yeah. Nothing. Didn't even get a yellow card, got a speaking to. Yeah. But it's an image thing because, again, everyone perceives me as this bad guy. And also because it was against Arsenal. Because I said something in 2017. Cojones. Yeah, but how, how dare you say something about Arsenal? Because, yeah. again, the perception is you're little Watford. You're not allowed to talk about the big boys. Right. Well, it's like when we played at Chelsea recently. It was like it was... Exactly the same thing. Committing a crime to take a point off them. Yeah, and then all the commotion afterwards is like, why? There's, there's many ways to play football. Again, many ways to play football, many ways in life. As long as you get to where you're getting to... Who's, who can stand there and say that's right and that's wrong? Yeah, yeah. So when so, so you think that negative image mm-hmm. has stopped you being an England player? Yeah, definitely in the past. Don't get me wrong, in the last couple of years before this, I wasn't good enough. Didn't do enough. I'm the first to say that. This year, it's still not been good enough. Been better, but not been good enough. Right. 
And then also now you're talking about age, different managers, different sure, styles. Sure. Probably the best chance I probably had was probably when Big Sam was in there. Um, but again, that lasted, what, 52 days? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just, again, it's one of those things. But I, I look at it like I don't regret anything I've ever done because mm. everything has led me to this point. So life will always throw little curveballs at you. And I'll, I'll look back and go, if I've written a book, basically everything we've said from the age of 10 to now, in England, cap is not going to define that no, story. No. So I don't, yes, it'd be the icing on the cake, it'd be a lovely little cherry, but there's so much more of me that people will eventually read. And you said there that you, were, you, you had a couple of years when you just weren't on it. Mm -hmm. Have you always been honest with yourself about your own abilities? Are you, are you not yeah. one, you're not one of those players who plays badly and goes and says to the manager, why aren't you picking me? No, 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 no. You know I, when I you're watched, playing badly. I watched, I'm very methodical. I watched the game, what? Four, five times the same day. What, the game you played in? Yeah. So if I, we played Burnley Saturday, three o'clock, I'd have watched f four times before I go to sleep. Wow. Because I, I, I watch it with commentary, with the foreign commentary, without commentary, and then I just, if I play bad, I just sit there and slag myself. You watch off. it with the foreign commentary? Yeah, different people's, <laughs> different people's uh, perspective. It's right, it's right, it's right. <laughs> no, you don't have the subtitles, I'm no good at like that. But yeah, you just different people's perspective on football. I read somewhere you read a, you watched a Burnley game twenty five times. Mm -hmm. The one we won this year, because everyone said I played really well, but I couldn't work out why because I thought I was really bad. So watched it nonstop. How and what did you what did you decide at the end? I was all right. I was a six and a half out of ten. Do you know that thing? I'm, uh, whenever I go to anybody's training ground, mm -hmm. I cannot understand why you lot sit around looking at those marks out of ten. Ego. Yeah, but some no mark twenty three year old journalist oh, is saying that you've never were... played a game of football. Yeah, it's but saying it's just, that you again, were six it's... out of five out of ten. Yeah, but it's a perspective, isn't it? <laughs> because sometimes you might go, Ah, oh, I was really good. I was a nine out of ten and you get the seven and you're like Seven? Yeah, but why do you bother? You see you Me say... personally, I like reading all the comments. I love comments. <laughs> I love when people hammer me. It makes me get up in the morning and go, Ha, I'm prove you wrong. Right. Um, don't so get me wrong, so I don't like got... the racism comments. That's a completely different yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. But any negative or even constructive criticism, I can take it and go, okay, maybe I need to work on that. But again, I know my limitations. Yeah. I'm not going to be trying to do five step overs and kick it past someone and run. It's not my game. I'm pretty quick, but I'm not that quick. You're never going to score that goal that Giggsy scored at Villa Park, are you? No, never. And if I did, the, you know, whoever played on the other team should not be allowed to play again. So <laughs> there's, um, there's just, again, I'm, I'm a simple person. I know my limitations, but I also think why not be really good at everything that people say you're good at. So try and make the best of that and see how far it takes you. And do you, do you, do you have, there, have there been problems in times in your career when you've had a problem drinking too much? Yeah, that's life. That's life stuff. Um, when, I, when I got sentenced to jail, that was because I found out my dad was dying. And again, that's like seeing Superman and someone just threw the kryptonite at him and he doesn't know what to do. That was the scariest part for me, seeing my hero that was never... Again, based off what I said earlier, people go, how's that your hero? But I saw two different sides, but I never had any issues because my dad was, took care of everything. So I could still be a kid whenever he was around. When he wasn't around, obviously I had to step up. But when I saw that happen, that was the first time ever in my life where I saw somebody very vulnerable. Someone that thought you couldn't break literally went, oh, what do I do? Because he had cancer of the uh, esophagus. Yeah. So it's literally a case of, how do we how yeah. do we go about this? And he, and he was scared. But he did this real weird thing where instead of being scared and going, crying or help me, he literally went, okay, drop me to the pub. I was like, what? He said, no, drop me to the pub. Because if I'm not in there by half 12, people will know someone's up. And you're like, wow. He just literally went old school, like, this is, this is what I'm used to. This is how I'm going to do it. And if it, that takes me out, that takes me out. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was strange. I don't understand that, how that got you to jail. Because that then triggered me, and I was like, oh, oh shit, like, I don't know what to do here. Instead of me going, Dad, are we, we going to be all right? I literally just turned to drink. I used to drink a lot anyway. Um, more socially, every weekend I'd have a few beers after football with the lads. But then it just, instead of it being Saturday, Sunday, it turned into Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Before you knew it, after it was Thursday. When, when, when a professional athlete is drinking like that, mm. do the other players not notice that straight away? Yeah, they notice. Because if you just look back, I look back at pictures now, I've lost like 14 kgs yeah. at the start of this season. Yeah. 
And I look back at pictures now and go, how the hell did I play football? Because I was massive. My belly was huge. My, my face was huge. But again, it comes down to the drive and the will. I'm not going to let somebody beat me easy. So but is it yourself that you're fighting? Yeah, yeah always. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Yeah. So that's what's going on mm -hmm. here. Yeah. I'm always fighting myself. Like I said to you, I should always... Everything now, there is nothing, literally nothing in my life that shouldn't make me happy. But there's something in here, there's some demons going on where I'm like, no, nah, you don't deserve to be happy. Right. And I'm probably looking at the other, other person, trying to fight that person. Like, I've got to crush that one and keep him under. Because it's a weird, really weird part. I still need to be angry to be Troy Dean the footballer. So how helpful has it been to talk to a psychologist about it? Huge. Huge. Has it made you a better player? It made me a better person, which in turn made me a better player, yeah. Um, yeah, I think because I'm the kind of person that thinks about a lot of things, he's then tried to get me to go, right, that's life, that's football, that's kids, that might, whatever it might be, that's business. And when you get stressed over one, right, take a step away from business, for example, and concentrate on your football. Right. And then we can still go back to this, because he's not going away anywhere. But really so he's not really a sports psychologist? He's a, no, 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 no. He's a, he's a counsellor. A counsellor. He's a bit of everything. I don't, he doesn't like his name to be mentioned, but he's worked with a lot of high-profile people, but also does lectures and stuff as well right. at Oxford University. So he's a very, very knowledgeable guy, but strips it down to the root of the problem, which will yeah. always be, for me, will be my upbringing, which sounds bad, but there's a lot of things that triggered me early which I'd never developed a full understanding of. And that's what I'm trying to get to. You had a friend who killed himself, didn't you? Yeah, Scotty. When was that? About six weeks ago? Yeah, six weeks ago. So that's... that's, that's, that's that, was, that was strange. Again, I have this thing where I think life levels me out. So that was my mum coming down to our, to our new place, staying with us for the weekend. Should be a real high, because I've got everyone around me that I need. Literally drove into London to uh, get some lunch, and as we're driving in, it's like 10:30. Call comes through the car. Scotty's dead. You're like, huh? How? Scotty don't bother no one. He's hung himself. Oh Jesus! And then, so where I should be here, I go back into this place, and I don't, I don't really deal with death that well anyway. I don't think anyone does, but I don't deal with it great in terms of processing it. So there was. Um, there was a lot with that, a lot of stress with that as well. And what, what was the, what was, what was the, what, how close were you to him? Uh, played football with each other for six years. He used to pick me up for college and take me to building college. He picked me up on his moped. If I had no money, which I didn't at times, he'd buy me lunch, that kind of thing. He was a real good kid. And uh, it's crazy because at Christmas, again, as we get older, you naturally don't see people all the time, but. Christmas, we were just sat down having, having a beer, just catching up. And how's things with you? How's things with you? Like, you just, you know, when you haven't saw someone for a couple of months, yeah. and just, just having that. And you, but you, there's no did, signs. You never saw somebody who might take his own life? No. He's the, he's the guy you'd want in battle with you. He'll do anything for anyone. But what, obviously, what no one knew was the fact that he had his own issues that he was hiding. Yeah. So that's why I'm, I'm big now on if I feel a certain type of way, I'll message someone. Right. Like, even if. I haven't spoken to them for ages. It's like, appreciate it, you've done, you know, thank you. And they'll be like, are you pissed? I'm like, no, I don't drink anymore. But there's just, I like to just transmit the yeah. how I'm feeling because I feel that everyone does it when you die. As soon as you die, yeah. everyone's like, oh, I wish I would have said this, I wish I would have said yeah. that. Where I'm trying to get to a point now, I'm going to just say it. So you, you don't drink at all now? Uh, is it recreationally, is that what it says? I do, I do it now in, in smart moments. Right. So I do... I generally try to get to a point where I don't drink at all, but like the semi-final, for example, we won that, went out with my pals, and I was the, the one who was most sober. I probably had four drinks. Right. But I try and count my drinks now, so yeah. I know how many I've had. Because I used to drink to a point where I blacked out yeah. and continued to drink, so yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. So, um, yeah, during the week, you can go months without drinking. And I did the same with gambling as well. I've like, give up on gambling full stop. You don't gamble at all now? No, no, gambling's completely done. But I used to... Because it's big, it's big in football, isn't it? It's boredom. It's all it is. Again, I make jokes about it, but I was finished work at quarter to one. So from that time until 9am tomorrow, it's free time. And again, we get paid. Everyone knows we get paid really well. So what do you do in that time to fill your time? Yeah. Not a lot of people 
do much if you have And do, play, do young players get much support on how to deal with that? Not enough. Because quite, I, I mean, I know, fear. you know, fans will say, why should you feel sorry for some 20-year-old kid on 20 grand a week? Of course. But that's, it's easy because fans don't ever break it down to that 20-year-old has probably only got an earning potential of six years. Whereas if you're a normal working person, it's from 16 or 18 to 65. Yeah. So when you level it out that way, there's probably not too much difference over, yeah. over the course of time if people are not smart with their money. Are you smart with your money? Wasn't getting there. But I, I enjoy businesses. I enjoy buying homes. Right. I used to be a builder, so I like getting involved in things. But um, money burns a hole in my pocket. If I know I've got it in the bank, it's like I need to do something. So a lot of my stuff is like putting trust for my kids and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just on, the, on the, the game, do you think you've got any chance at all of beating City? Yeah, why not? <laughs> you guys can draw a Chelsea, then. What, we can do anything. <laughs> no, yeah, why not? I would never go into a game. I wouldn't, <clears throat> I wouldn't play football if I went, ah, no chance of beating them. Wigan proved it a few years ago. Yeah. You can beat yeah. them. But um, no, it's a one-off. And again, it might be a case of City are used to the big occasions. So it might be just a well, walk in the park. We know what to expect and all that. For us, it's, I only found out the other day, I'm going to be meeting royalty for the first time. Like, that's crazy to me. Yeah. So then that might get an extra 5-10% out of me that I never had. Really? You never know. It's emotion, isn't it? So you can't control emotion. But what if I go, no, nah, like, this is crazy. I, re I want it, but I really want this now. What happens if the... What happens after two minutes we get a penalty and I score? I'm going to run around like a nutter for the next 90. So there's all these different things that might come into play that we, we're not used to this. Might get people... Delefeo might have the best game of his life. Yeah. If he's picked. If he's picked. If he's not picked, he might just come on and save us again. But there's, <laughs> there's all these different things where we don't know how all of our players are going to react, which might get you a bit more out of it, yeah. which then naturally... I don't know. Could be anything. Could be a VAR decision that we probably wouldn't get in the Prem. And we get it now and it's like, ah, oh, changes the game. Do you, who did you vote for Player of the Year? Raheem. Raheem Sterling. Right. Yeah. Um, was, was Ashley Barnes close? No. <laughs> I, I like Ashley as a person, but as a player, I can't stand him. Yeah. I love him. Yeah, he's I a love nice, him. Lo I lovely love guy, but as a footballer, I think we just, we just clash. We're kind of the people that just clash. So every game, I give him some and he gives me some. Yeah, yeah. that's why we love him. Yeah, he's a, ni he's a nice enough kid, though. Um, who else is there? Sam Vokes, obviously, I know he's not there anymore, but Sam was a, a similar... When you have players that are used to getting whacked like we are, you kind of have a bit more respect. For You've got them. a bit of a bond there. Yeah, like you don't get any fouls as well. Yeah, me neither. So it's just, <laughs> <laughs> just carry on going. So what, go on then. What's the what, if you if you when you when you go into a game like the cup final? Because mm -hmm. you talked about players always, you know, the, the the sort of program now to say the same thing. So that yeah. whole sort of you know one game at a time, blah yeah. blah blah. It is different, though, if you, if you, if you play in this. 100%, yeah. yeah. Again, I can only talk on myself in this, but this is the stuff I used to stay up and watch. Like, I used to stay after games and watch the whole build-up whenever I played Sunday League football with my mates. Watch the whole build-up. You'd be watching it from it's a 5 o'clock. You'd watch it from, like, 2.33. You see the Royal Band. You see everyone going up Wembley Way, that kind of thing. It's just like, now it's me that's there. Yeah. Like, it's so strange to me. It's only because I'm so much focused on the next game, and people think that's just a cliche. Thing. I am generally focused on the next game. It's only been this last week because I haven't played that I'm like, oh, you're going to meet royalty. Oh, you have to walk uh, Prince William down the, down the line. You better get everyone's name right. Do you know, like little, little things like this, yeah. which I would never have thought of up until the day, yeah. I'm now processing. So I'm like, no, this is going to be a huge occasion. And what if? That's the question now. What if? What if we win? Can you imagine me picking up the FA Cup? Be be crazy. And do you visualise that as a as a positive, or are you, are you thinking, what yeah. if I drop it? No, nah, I thinking, probably what will. If That's I don't. what Troy does. Troy, like, where we go, Troy did. Troy makes a lot of mistakes. Troy's the guy that trips up. I fell down the, down the stairs like two days ago, literally trying to step over the dog and just slipped out about four. Like she's just laughing at me. But that's what I do. I'm. A, Again, I'm a mummy's boy, but I'm a bit of a fool. I make a lot of mistakes, but yeah, I probably will. I'll probably go, hey, no more look at throw back and hit William in the face or something. So <laughs> it's just one of those one of those things where I'm uh, 
I'm expecting it to happen, but I'm just going to go with the flow and see what happens. Now, I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a kind of... I think if you're a football fan, you've got to be a proper fan. OK. Right? OK. So I go to a lot of Burnley games, home I've and seen, away, yeah. right? Elton. Mm -hmm. He hardly ever goes. No, he, he does, considering his schedule. And he doesn't live in the country. He makes a few. <laughs> does he? Yeah, he'll be there at the final as well. Yeah. He's been made aware that he's going to be there, so... No, but then, like, he does little things. Like, he'll drop me an, e an email. And, like, again... I'm used to getting an email for like British gas and then ever that again you just get like out of John like <laughs> better open that one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he's he's a good he's a good guy. And like for me again there's a bit more of a collection because his concert money bought me. Yeah. When I first went there for like three hundred thousand. So it's like it's massive to see how the club has grown in, in He that. bought what? He did a he did a, a, a fundraiser like concert at Watford to raise money and that money ended up buying me. Right. So I went there for 300,000 for oh, Warsaw. a proper bond. No, he's yeah. a proper ledge. Yeah, he's a proper... Yeah, yeah. And then he did like a concert at Warsaw maybe four or five years ago. And then it was like, thank you everyone for coming out and thank you for Troy Deeney. And like little things like that is just massive again because my, my nan loves him. So it's, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, so what's the worst thing that's ever been said to you on a race, racism front? Oof. On the pitch, mm -hmm. from the terraces and online? Uh, on the pitch, generally nothing... I think right. that ties back into the whole, I'm a big guy, so people think there might be, there's a, there's a, a loose cannon that's attached to me. I think people think we might actually go off, so no one really says anything like that. From the stands was, was more of my family at, at Wembley uh, with the Wolves fans recently, yeah. so that was, I think there's a line in, in life anyway. If you dislike me because of football, that's fine, but then when you start going at my family and doing like new signs to, to my partner, like, it's Were they doing that? Yeah, so my, my family was in the box. And obviously when I've scored the goal, and actually drinks gone in the air, some spilled over, then it turned into a, a racial slur. Because, again, because of football. It's really strange to me how people try and say that these people aren't racist. Oh, it was only at football, it doesn't count. Or it was only said online, I'm not that kind of way. Yeah. You must be to say that kind of thing. And I say, like, when people are doing news signs and... At the stadium? Yeah, to my partner and to my brother and that. And this is the thing that really gets me. So at Wembley, the, the staff there came in and then tried to blame my lot because they spilt a drink. Not the fact that the actual racism part. It was like, we're gonna, we've had a complaint about you guys spilling a drink. Mm. Whereas it's, OK, well, we want to talk about the racism part. Ah, that's only your word against theirs. Mm. Like, it's re to me, it's so mind-boggling that now in, in this, this generation now, especially if you look at London, you, you can see 25 different nationalities just on the tube alone. And we are still in a, a, a day and age where people go, I'm going to say nigger, I'm going to say monkey this or whatever. And people go, no, it's not racism, it's just banter. Mm. It's not, because if I turn around and smack you in the face, or one of my, in this instance, my brother lost his head. But if my brother then goes down and does something, he's the bad guy. Mm. But you've never had, like, you know, when Reem Sterling at Chelsea this year? I mean, that was no, I've, I've, had a, I've had a few bits of that. I, I played at Millwall when I was younger. But honestly, that stuff doesn't af affect me personally because I think you're so childish. So if someone threw a banana on a pitch at me, I would literally pick it up and eat it. And, and literally, I'm more of a, you want to attack me, I'm going to actually show you why you're going to respect me. That's just me personally. I can see other people take offence. And, and it is, it's childish, and it's not only that. It's just damn right rude because you, you think because you're a certain skin tone that you're better than another person because you, you didn't, you wasn't in control of that. Yeah. He was literally born. But um, just the stuff that you get on, on social media now is, is ridiculous. And when you, you um, report it, it's literally like you've got, a, they literally have to say you are an effing B word to literally say that because my partner reported 14, I reported like 30. Every time, oh, you report... After the semi-final? Yeah. I can literally get my phone out now and show you 60. Where it's like, monkey this, monkey that. But it's like, the monkey emoji isn't racist. Right. Someone saying, like to Ben Foster, we're going to rape your chi children. That's not provocative. But if we was to turn around and go, you're a piece of shit, we're going to fucking do ya. We then get sanctioned and get... In my case, Adidas would come at me. Watford would come at me. They'd be legal. But you can say whatever you want from a phone or from a screen. Mm. 
and nothing. No one, there's no pressure on, the, on these big companies to say, this is wrong. And do the clubs help the players with that stuff or not? They're trying to now, but I think, again, it's been one of those things when... It's only because Raheem has made it fashionable. And what I, when I say that, I mean, he's come out and said, I'm not having this. Yeah. Pep's come out and said, I'm not having this. So you've got probably the best English player plus the best manager in the world. Second, with the biggest... Second best. <laughs> after Sean Dyche, obviously, sorry, silly me. Yeah. But then you've got um, the Premier League now. How, how do you not back it? Yeah. Because yeah. if you think about it, even that, so 25 years of kick it out, only this, this year is the first year they've had two weekends and, and an armband. Yeah. But before that, for 24 years, nothing, just T-shirts. But you, apart from the, put the semi-final to one side, mm -hmm. through the, the course of the last year, you haven't noticed it? Yeah, the right year? yeah it's, it's risen massively. It could Social does. media or in the stadiums? Both. But I'm, I'm starting to see... see I, I've got to tell you, I think that's Brexit. Would you say that? Yeah, I do. That, I think Brexit yeah, has unleashed it, it, from, from, from my point of view, again, it was more angled at a race thing that if, if we close the borders... People from Europe can't come in and get our jobs. That was how it was sold up north. Mm. I don't know down here because I wasn't here a lot at the time, but that's kind of how it came across. And it turned into, like I said earlier, it turned into a, oh, the reason none of us are working is because all the jobs are going to foreign guys. It's like, mm. no, the reason we're not working is because you're a lazy shit. It's probably what, eh? <laughs> and it's easier to not work. You get paid a lot more to not work now. So, yeah, that's another, another argument for another day, but... I, would, I wouldn't disagree necessarily with that, but I think there's so much lack of education now for people because when I... People go, oh, you need to target the next generation. When I look at the Raheem pictures from Chelsea, mm -hmm. they were big, grown men. They were the old, uh, my yeah. age, yeah. yeah. And so how do you then educate them people? Mm -hmm. Because all that guy got was a, a stadium band. Mm -hmm. And that's a Chelsea stadium band. He and can he's, still go he's to, probably got kids who've got kids. And of course, and he can still go to Man City yeah. and say that. He can yeah. still go to Watford and say that. It's just he can't go to Stamford Bridge. Yeah. We had the same kind of incident, not racial, but at Birmingham versus Aston Villa, when a guy comes on and punches yeah, the guy. Yeah, Greenish. Yeah, punch Jack, and he got like 14 weeks in jail. Yeah. So we could do that. So you literally are getting to a point now where you have to physically be standing in front of someone, calling them a black bastard, to then get some sort of like reprimand or something to happen, or a player to then go, no, he said this, wallop, and then both years get done. We need to step in beforehand because. Ultimately, we, we was involved in something recently with the Enough campaign, which was just a little, little feeler to see what the power of players could actually do. And that has got so many people worried and big companies going, oh, what if they all decided to do it? Yeah. And that, that is what really interests me because it comes back to business. The business sense of it says, we can't afford that to happen. Instead of actually going to the, why don't we just look at it? How many black players are there in the Premier League? In, well, in football, full stop. It's kind of like the NFL, it's highly populated in terms yeah. of black and mixed players playing. Yeah. But up above, how many? I think there's three in the league, in all the leagues in England. So we need to start, we can talk about it, but until things start happening, then I just think it's going to continually keep going and keep going and keep going until somebody just goes, right, I ain't playing, I'm walking off. That's what will happen. Would you ever, as the captain, mm -hmm. if you were racially, if you saw one of your players being racially abused, mm -hmm. either by another player yeah. or from the terraces, would you ever just say, right, sod this? We're if off. he wanted to walk off, would walk off with him. Yeah. If one of our players went, he said this to me, I ain't having it. I did say, what do you want to do? Because that's just my mentality anyway. What do you want to do? Me personally, I think, I think we feed into the minority if we walk off but I fully understand anyone and respect anybody that goes, I don't deserve this, and walks off. I, I fully get that. But me, personally, I think, again, being a fan, used to go and watch games, if 98% are behaving and two went, mm -hmm. and we all walk off, we're still not tackling the 2% that have messed up. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be bigger uh, sanctions in place, personally. Mm -hmm. Name the clubs that have won all four divisional titles. That's unreal. <laughs> That's an unbelievable question to be thrown out there. Um, how far back we go from the start of football? Because you'd probably go Forest would have to be up there? No. Liverpool? No. No, Liverpool never. Yes, yeah, so I mean, you'd have to go teams that have come from like nowhere. Barnsley? No. <laughs> when have they ever won the I don't know. top flight? I don't know. What are you talking about? I don't know. You've got me on this one. This is too old. Burnley Wolves. Burnley and Wolves? Yeah. 
hate wolves as well. You hate wolves? <laughs> I hate wolves. I'm from Bro, the what's, your, what's your favourite quiz question? That's a question for you. There's been seven people, seven Chelsea players, that have wore the number nine since Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. Seven? Seven. Yeah. No, I don't really follow Chelsea. No. Who's good, like, good at the moment? Uh, what's his name? Higuain. Yeah, but then there's like Steve Sidwell. Oh, no. No one ever gets. No yeah. one ever gets. Um, no. I forget the guy's name. Centre half Dutch. Bele, Belarish, is it? Oh, I'm not getting any of this. Yeah, no, it's one no, of them no, ones. No. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I managed to get that other than the centre off. So someone. Got, got yeah, one. well, listen, it, mine was uh, easier and you, you didn't get it. <laughs> uh, I knew we should have had Burnley. That's actually cool Yeah, you should have, should have realised that. All my questions are about Burnley. Very good, I'm done. Thank you very, Thank much, you very much. Appreciate the Thank time. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. And good luck against uh, Cite. Thank you.